Taylor Shabby Venus picked up Shad Thyron from his mother's home around 9.30 p.m. on February 21st of 2022. A mutual friend of the two joined them before they went to an apartment where they all smoked marijuana. Taylor told police that at the apartment, Shad smoked meth and injected Chazodone. Eventually, Taylor and Shad returned to Shad's mother's house. They spent the day there while his mother was away. The next morning, on February 23 of 2022, Tara Pakinich had discovered her son's severed head in a bucket in her basement. Steve Hendricks, Tara Pakinich's boyfriend, called 911. When police arrived, they searched the basement and then secured the home. The police also confirmed that the remains in the bucket were a human head. During the interview with Shad's mother, she stated that the last person she saw her son alive with was with Taylor when she picked him up hours before. Following the interview with Shad's mother, authorities eventually located Taylor who had removed a GPS tracker from her ankle. Taylor had previously gotten in trouble with the law. She was convicted of unrelated, fleeing, eluding, and obstructing a police officer charges. She was given three months in jail in January of 2020. It's unclear if she was under house arrest or work release at the time of Shad's murder. Taylor told police that her and Shad used chains to choke one another as a form of foreplay. On that particular night, Taylor explains that her and Shad put metal chains on each other. Taylor explained that Shad was reportedly laying down in bed as she quote unquote went crazy and choked him despite the fact that Shad had been choking up blood and turning purple. Taylor explained that it took three to five minutes for Shad to die. She expressed her joy in choking him and asked detectives if they knew what it was like to love something so much that you would kill it. Taylor told police that she continued to have sex with Shad's dead body for some time because she enjoyed it. Then, with the intention to dismember Shad and keep all his body parts, she gathered kitchen knives, but, quote-unquote, she got lazy. Taylor proceeded to use a bucket and a tote bag to collect Shad's blood. Then she showered with the collected blood. Taylor was charged with first-degree intentional homicide, mutilating a corpse, and third-degree SA. Taylor entered a plea of not guilty by reason of insanity. A court-appointed physician found that Taylor was able to stand trial. Taylor's lawyer stated that she had been diagnosed with bipolar disorder in the past and had been getting treatment since she was in the 7th grade. Judge Thomas Walsh, however, also ruled that Taylor was competent to stand trial. Taylor attacked her first lawyer during a courtroom hearing before a deputy rescued her to the courtroom floor. Judge Thomas J. Walsh explained to the jury that Taylor entered two pleas not guilty and not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect. Walsh explained that in the initial phase of the trial, the juries are only to consider Taylor's guilt, not if she was suffering from a mental disease or defect during the incident. Taylor's attorney sought to have her statements at the time of her arrest thrown out, stating that Taylor was under the influence of drugs. Her lawyer also sought to drop the essay charge, but it was denied by a judge based on the idea that the victim was dead and his private parts were dismembered. Taylor's lawyer filed a motion to exclude evidence of searches Taylor made before the murder, Jeffrey Dahmer walking into courtroom sexy and Jeffrey Dahmer's butt. Judge Walsh ruled that those searches could be admitted in court. He, however, ruled that there should be no mention of Taylor's searches for satism. The opening statement started with Assistant District Attorney Caleb Saunders stating that Taylor made a series of choices that led to the death of Shad Thyrian. It started with her use of meth with Shad, Saunders says, followed by her decision to intentionally strangle him to death with a dog collar in his mother's basement, degrade his body with sexual acts on his corpse, dismember his body, scrub the crime scene clean, and hide his remains in her car and throughout his mother's basement, telling law enforcement they would quote unquote have fun trying to find him. Taylor's lawyer, Christopher Froledge, in his opening statement, urged the jury to keep an open mind and not jump to conclusions about the defendant's guilt until they heard all the evidence. Tara Pakinich, Shad's mother, testified that on February 23 of 2022, she was awoken by a door slamming in her house around 2.30 in the morning. Tara testified she got out of bed and checked the basement of her home to see if her son was there. When she didn't find him in the basement, she turned to walk upstairs and that's when she saw a five-gallon bucket with a towel on top of it. Tara said she took the towel off the bucket and found her son's head inside. Alex Wanish, a Green Bay police officer, testified, I went downstairs and at the bottom of the stairs to the right, there was a green bucket with a shower towel on top of it. Just to verify we had an actual human head in the bucket, lifted the towel, and there was in fact a human severed head in the bucket. The jury watched Taylor's interrogation as Taylor described how Shad's head was the first thing she took off and that she was very excited about abusing his corpse. During the trial, the jury saw graphic photos and video of items found in Shad's mother's basement and in Taylor's car, including the victim's head in a bucket, bags and containers filled with body parts, 
sex toys, doll collar chains, and bloody knives. Dane County Medical Examiner Dr. Vincent Chantida testified in court about the lack of blood at the scene of the murder. We have decapitation. We have the slim movement. We have cuts across the torso. Subsequently, internally, the body has been eviscerated. In other words, we have entered inside the body through various cuts through the abdomen and between the ribs where the victim's organs have been removed, largely one by one, he told the jurors. Dr. Tranchita also said that one of Shad's feet had been shoved into his chest cavity and that his back was filleted. Detective Groff testified that Taylor initially stated that she blacked out while choking Shad. She later allegedly admitted she regained consciousness and thought she was already this far so she just kept on choking him. He continued to testify that Taylor allegedly admitted that she enjoyed the ordeal. Her response was that she liked it, Detective Groff said. Detective Groff told the jury she described how she had sexual contact with the body in terms of playing with his private area. Also, she described how she had a sex toy that she placed in his mouth and she also cuddled with the body. Christopher Froelich states that the case was quote-unquote a puzzling, unclear collection of facts in his closing argument. Was this an accidental death? Was there intent to kill Shad Thyron? It's foggy. It's cloudy. It's hard to figure out, he said. David Lassay called the entire case quote-unquote bizarre in his closing argument. This is strange. This is unnatural. But in no way is it unclear, he said. She did cause Shad Thyron's death. The jury found Taylor guilty of all charges. Taylor's trial now moved to the second phase to determine whether she was mentally ill or not. A defense psychologist stated that Taylor was not criminally responsible for her actions due to the fact that she suffered from severe bipolar disorder that left her unable to appreciate the wrongfulness of her actions and deprived her of volitional control. However, two court-appointed psychologists testified for the state that Taylor's actions were fueled by drugs, making her ineligible for insanity plea under Wisconsin's definition of mental disease or defect. They stated that Taylor's decision to dismember Shad's body and clean the basement crime scene as evidence as Taylor knowing her actions were wrong. Taylor's lawyer argued that though the drugs may have compounded her psychosis, there was also enough evidence that Taylor suffered from a long-standing disorder that affected her actions going back to adolescence. Arturo Coronado, Taylor's father, who is currently serving time himself, testified that Taylor's mother died when she was 11 and that she was a normal child. He did mention Taylor was experiencing hallucinations when she was living with him as an adult. He testified that he sought help for his daughter on several occasions because she suffered from those hallucinations and wasn't in her right mind. When asked by Christopher Froledge, Taylor's attorney, if he had any concerns about her from a physical or mental standpoint, and Arturo said, always. Taylor waived her right to testify at both phases of the trial. The jury deliberated for an hour before unanimously agreeing that Taylor was not suffering from a mental disease or defect that impacted her ability to know right from wrong or act within the bounds of the law, meaning that Taylor would be sent to prison instead of a mental institution. Sentencing for Taylor is scheduled for September 26, 2023. She is facing life in prison since Wisconsin does not have the death penalty. And that is the end of today's video. Today's video was a tough one. What happened to Shad is one of the worst things that could happen to a person. Not only was his life taken away, but he was brutally mutilated afterwards. No matter if Taylor had mental health problems at the time of the murder, as she wanted to claim, that is not an excuse for her to completely disrespect Shad. Hopefully she will get life in prison for her disturbing crime. To his family, especially to his mother for having to find her own son like that, I hope they get justice for the senseless death of Shad. Until next time, be safe, Earthlings.